Well, in a delightful twist of fate, I realized when I recorded this video, um, I had the microphone off. So I'm doing a voiceover over the video and hopefully I can blend the two together. I guess we'll see. So this video is looking at empirical and molecular formulas. Essentially, an empirical formula um, is a proverbial brick and a molecular formula is a proverbial wall. So essentially, um, the relationship between the empirical and molecular formula is an integer relationship. There are n multiples of empirical formula in a molecular formula. And at some point in this video, um, again, I'm doing a voiceover because I had my microphone muted. Here we go. It looks like I'm writing on the video now. So I've written that the molecular formula is the proverbial wall, the empirical is the proverbial brick. Okay, very good. The question reads, an oxide of chromium is found to have the following percent composition. 68.4% chromium and 31.6% oxygen, and we're asked to determine the compound's empirical formula. Okay, so essentially um, there's a strategy to doing uh, this type of question and the strategy is to, especially if you're given a percentage, is to immediately convert percentages to grams. And we can do that, remember, because percentages have no units. And then we'll then convert the gram to mole. So we're going to start writing the answer now. We've got our strategy, taking the given percentages, convert to gram. And then ultimately we need the ratio, we need the integer n, which is the mole ratio. Okay, so making a bit more room here so we can fit the answer in. And now looking at the values we're being given, we need the periodic table to get the molecular weights. We have 68.4 uh, grams of chromium. Remember that's the percentage converted right to gram. That's our input. Then we use dimensional analysis. We know by definition one mole of chromium is equal to uh, 52 grams of chromium. So that's the atomic mass of chromium in the periodic table. We do that calculation, 68.4 multiplied by 1 divided by 52. And at some point I'm going to write that down. Let's see what that, there you go. And that gives us one, I wonder what I was saying in the original recording here. It's taken me a while to write, to write this down. Probably lost my marker at something. Okay, this equals 1.3153 moles of chromium. We are good to go for three sig figs. So that dash line is where the significant insignificant boundary lays. And I want you to get in the habit of always adding two non-significant digits so we can later round up. So the five and the three are not significant, but we propagate them anyway. So that's how many moles of chromium we have. We need to do a similar calculation for oxygen. Um, so we'll just make a little bit of room and we'll do that right underneath. We have 31.6 grams of oxygen. That's our input. And we use the equivalents. One moles of oxygen is equal to 16 grams of oxygen. Again, that's the uh, atomic mass of oxygen in the periodic table. We cancel our units, grams of oxygen, and we're left with moles of oxygen equal to 1.97. 50 moles of oxygen. Again, we're good for three sig figs because of our input 31.6. So we put a dash line uh, after the third and, be and before the fourth digit, and we propagate two non significant digits. Okay, so let's rewrite what we have. We have chromium. 1.3153, that's how many moles we have, 
and we have oxygen 1.9750. So that's our mole ratio, but that's hardly a way to present. We have to present with whole integers. So we're going to divide through by the smallest number of moles, which in this case is the 1.3153. So we divide both sides by the smaller of the two numbers, in this case 1.3153. And clearly that's going to return a chromium integer of 1 and an oxygen integer of 1.5. And We definitely don't want to round the 1.5, that would be bad. We want to scale the whole thing to get rid of the fraction and return an integer. So in this occasion, if we scale the whole thing by a factor of 2, that should multiply that 1.5 and return a whole integer value of 3. So if we apply the whole integer 2 to both the chromium and the oxygen, it will return an empirical formula of Cr2O3. That's our empirical formula. We know it's empirical, we know it's a brick, because you can't divide the number 2 and 3 by a common number to reduce them any lower. So we're as small as we can be, we're as low as we can be, so we're a, an empirical formula. Okay, so we're going to move on to question 2 of 3. All right, so question two of three reads 170.00 gram sample of an unidentified compound contains 28.84 grams of sodium, 67.49 grams of chromium, and 72.67 grams of oxygen. What is the compound's empirical formula? This question is a bit different because we're not given percentages out the gate. We're given grams, and the way it's being presented to us, they don't equal 100 gram. So there's many ways you can do this, but there's one way I'll promote to you, and that is to always convert back to percentages, and then you've essentially scaled it back to 100. Once you've got percentages, then go to gram and then moles again. So that would be, um, again, it's not the only way to do it. If you choose to do it another way, that's fine, so long as you get it right. But definitely the easiest way that I would recommend that you do it so that we can follow the same procedure, percent to gram to mole, is just to scale it back to 100. So at some point in my pre-recorded but soundless video, I will... Um, get to that uh, at some point now as soon as I see me writing it I'll continue my little voiceover again in this video uh, I recorded the whole video played it back realized there was no sound so I'm doing a voiceover which is pretty unusual usually I realize that I've done that and I'll hit the mic on but I didn't notice this time so I'm just clearly telling uh, people in the video my suggestion to rescale back to a percentage and then once you're a percentage go back to gram and then go back to mole and when we do that we're going to get different grams than we were given in the original question because again the question was scaled to 170 gram sample we're going to scale it back to 100 gram sample and proportion all the other masses accordingly Okay, so any second now we're going to start solving this problem. Okay, it looks like we're ready. I'm excited. We're going to start solving the problem, and here we go. So when we scale back the 28.84 gram from 170 gram sample to 100, 
it returns 17.5529 grams of sodium. That's out of a 100 gram sample, remember. And we convert that to mole by the equality one mole of sodium is equal to 22.99 grams of sodium. Again, the 22.99 is the mass that comes from the periodic table. Cancel units of grams of sodium, and that gives us 0 0.763503 moles of sodium. Again, we're good for sig figs because of our input mass. We propagate an extra couple of digits. The 0 and the 3 are to the right of the dashed line. Because remember, we're not going to round at the stage. Doing the same for chromium. Scaling it back to a 100 gram sample, we have 39.70 uh, grams of chromium. And we convert that to moles by hitting it with the equality. One mole of chromium is equal to 52 grams of chromium. We cancel units. Grams of chromium get canceled. And we're left with 0 0.763461 moles of chromium. And then doing exactly the same thing for oxygen to finish us off in this problem. The scaled back mass is 42.7470 grams of oxygen. And that is multiplied by one mole of oxygen being equal to 16 grams of oxygen. We cancel units, grams of oxygen cancels, and we're left with 2.67169 moles of oxygen. All right, so we're going to do something similar to the first example. We're going to list them all in the hideous decimals. We're going to divide through by the smallest one, the smallest decimal, to return ultimately uh, respectable whole integers. Okay, at any, any second now I'm going to do this. I guess in the original video I was yapping on about something. I can't remember what it was now. Okay, so we write down sodium with our original moles, which were 0 0.763503. Then we have chromium, which originally was 0 0.763461 moles. And then finally, oxygen, which originally was 2.67169 moles. We have to divide through by the smaller number, which in this case is the chromium moles, the central value. So I'm changing the color to blue to make it pop a little bit. Divide through by the smallest number, which in this case is 0 0.763461. And obviously, I actually do this on paper. Don't do it in your head. That can't be graded. Um, so show your workings. One of them is always going to be one because you divide in through by one of the by the smallest number. So chromium is going to go down to one. Uh, the sodium is also going to go down to one, but the oxygen is going to go to three point five. And again, we don't want to round that to four. We want to scale through to get rid of the fraction. So to get rid of this 0.5 fraction, we know we need to scale by a factor of 2, the whole thing. And then we just hit the 1, the 1, and the 3.5 by the coefficient 2 to return a 2 to 2 to 7 mole ratio. So Na2Cr207, that's our empirical formula. We know it's empirical because it can't be reduced down any further because the numbers 2, 2, and 7 have no common denominator other than 2 and 7. Uh, actually, no, not other than 2 and 7. They don't have one, right? 
they don't have a shared common denominator. So we are done. Third and final question. In this video reads a compound containing 5.9265% of hydrogen, 94.0735% oxygen, has a molar mass of 34.01468 grams per mole. Determine the empirical and molecular formulas of this compound. So this question asks for the same as previous questions, the empirical formula, but in addition, it also asks for the molecular formula. So we're going to start off in a similar manner to previous questions. We are going to calculate, um, we're going to convert, here it's already in percentages, which is great. Uh, I think in the video I'm telling you all that the molecular formula and the molar formula are the same, or the word molecular and molar are used interchangeably, so you just have to get used to that. So any second now we're going to start converting these percentages directly to gram and then eventually to mole. So hydrogen is up. We have 5.9265 gram of hydrogen. We hit that with the equality one mole of hydrogen is equal to, oh, it's making a bit of space. We, we hit that with the equality one mole of hydrogen is equal to 1.01 .01 gram of hydrogen. Okay, we cancel units, gram of hydrogen, and that equals 5.867821 moles of hydrogen. Again, we're good to a whopping big five sig figs now because of our input. So we add an extra couple of non-significant digits, the two and the one there to the right side of the dash. Doing the same for oxygen, we convert the 94.0735% immediately to a gram of oxygen. And then we hit that with the equality. One mole of oxygen is equal to 16 grams of oxygen the molar mass of the periodic table. Cancel units, gram of oxygen, and we're left with 5.87959 dash 37 moles of oxygen. Okay. So they're the only two elements we have. So we are able to just write them down with all the decimals. So H uh, 5.867821, <clears throat> that's how many moles we have, and then oxygen, 5.8795937. We're going to have to divide through by the smaller number, which in this case is hydrogen's number. So we divide both sides by 5.867821, which is again the smaller of the two numbers. That returns uh, a number one in both cases. So we know to whole integers, the empirical formula is just HO. So that's our break in this case. So we've answered part of the question. We've answered the empirical formula part of the question. <clears throat> and now we're going to extend it to the additional aspect of this question, which was regarding the molecular formula. So what's the relationship between the molecular formula and the empirical formula? Well, the equation that you need is that n multiples of empirical formula is equal to the molecular formula. Because remember, the empirical formula can be thought of as a proverbial brick. So there are n bricks in a proverbial wall. And in this case, the molecular formula is the proverbial wall. So what we need to do is to solve for the integer n. Um, and one of the things we need to do that is to calculate the formula weight, 
FW of the empirical formula. So we've got one hydrogen atom, which is a mass of 1.01, .01, an oxygen atom, which has a mass of 16. We add them together. So we know the mass of the empirical formula is 17.01 .01 grams per mole. So that's the mass of our brick. We were given the mass of the wall in the problem, so it will be a case of just dividing the mass of the brick into the mass of the wall to quantify how many bricks we have. So solving for N, we have N is the molecular formula or the weight of the molecular formula, it will turn out to be, divided by the weight of the empirical formula. We were given the molecular formula weight in the question. So we know that that is 34.01468 grams per mole. So again, that was given to us in the question. We determined the weight of the brick is 17.01 .01 grams per mole. We cancel the units, grams per mole, and we return a value of 1.999 which clearly is reasonable to round to a coefficient 2. You would never leave it as 1.999. You always have to give uh, integers. So we know that we have to apply that integer to our empirical formula. So HO now becomes H2O2, and that is our molecular formula. So that will be our third and final question in this video, um, which, again, just to remind you, if you're st still watching this video 22 minutes in, which hopefully you are if you're in my class, then this video was looking at uh, empirical formulas and molecular formulas, and we used the analogy uh, of proverbial bricks and proverbial walls. And that will conclude this video.